Good morning, YouTube. It's Barbara Jean. Um, it's actually 2 o'clock in the morning here. Um, I have a word to give you. Um, I'm going to read a couple of verses. First, I'm going to read from Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, starting at verse 12. Who is the wise man that may understand this? And who is he whom the mouth of Jehovah has spoken, that he may declare it? Wherefore is the land perished and burned up like a wilderness, so that none passeth through? And Jehovah saith, Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walk therein, but have walked after the stubbornness of their own heart, and after the Balaam, which their fathers taught them, Therefore, therefore, thus saith Jehovah the, of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood, and give them water of gall to drink. I will scatter them also among the nations, whom neither they nor, uh, that neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send the sword after them, till I have consumed them. Now I want to go to Revelation chapter 8 starting at verse 10 and the third angel sounded and there fell from the heaven a great star burning as a torch and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters and the name of the star is called wormwood and the third part of the, the waters became worm, wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter and the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, and the third part of them should be darkened, and the day should not shine for the third part of it, and the night in like manner. Okay. Um, yesterday I was... Um, speaking with the Lord, and um, he seemed different. Um, it just seemed different. Uh, it's hard to explain. Um, we just, it just seemed, he seemed hmm, different. <laughs> I can't explain it. And, and I asked him about it, and the words came to my mind, um, um, he was in mourning for his brethren. Um, and I heard the words, no more delay. No more delay. So what I gathered from it was that uh, the Lord is mourning for the loss of those who, uh, lukewarm Christians, basically lukewarm people who uh, are not ready for his return. People who know of him, know about him, know know him, and yet have not prepared. The uh, unwise virgins, if you will, they have not put on their wedding garments, and uh, he's in mourning for the loss of his brethren who will be left behind during a very bad time. Um, and, and like I said, the words "no more delay," "no more delay," came to my mind. And that he was, so he was, that's why he was different. He was mourning. Um, and then this morning, um, early, just about an hour ago, I was lying down in, in my bed in, in a light sleep. I wasn't sleeping very hard. I was sleeping. And the word wormwood came to my head very strongly. It woke me up. And... And I laid there thinking about it, and I'm praying about it, and then the Lord told me, I basically make this video. So I guess this is a, a final warning, or um, a very strong warning to the believers, uh, to the non-believers, to get yourself right, get yourself prepared. There is no more delay, and that wormwood is on its way. Um... um 
those who uh, know about Ison, the comet Ison, uh, I suppose that they were uh, rejoicing. Those who are in NASA, NASA were rejoicing when NASA, when Ison actually uh, broke up. <laughs> um, but the reality was, it was a, a a sign of the Lord, a sign of judgment. If Ison had stayed together and had passed us, we wouldn't be heading into this meteor field. Um, and uh, so <laughs> it was a sign of God's judgment that he is no longer delaying. There's no more delay, people. So anyway, um, make that as make up for that as you will. I, I um, don't know how else to say it. Um, if if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, I suggest you do it now. <laughs> there is no more time. Um, ask him into your heart. It's not hard to do. Cry out to the Lord. Surrender your heart to him. Surrender your life. Give yourself to him because there, there is no more time. Um, also, um, if you haven't been baptized, please do so now as quickly as possible. Uh, anybody you know who has been baptized, a disciple of Jesus Christ, call them. And uh, if you have access to um, some body of water, uh, if it's warm enough to be baptized outside in a river or lake or stream, or you have a, a bathtub that's deep enough or a hot tub or a pool um, or a church, go to your local church, ask them to baptize you. Um, there isn't in much time. Baptism uh, guarantees your salvation. Uh, the Bible says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Baptism is the act of putting on Christ. You are born again in baptism, and you are putting on Christ's finished work. It's God's act of grace towards you. When you are baptized, you are putting on Christ Jesus, so that when the Lord sees you, He doesn't see you in your sins. He sees Jesus Christ in His finished work. So, um, Anyway, I will uh, leave it at that, and God bless you all.